Hello everybody, I'm Nubicus Maximus, and today, hopefully just in time for Solo to come out, I'm going to be reviewing the Hot Wheels Starships Star Wars Millennium Falcon. This is going to be the one from the new Solo movie with the weird thing in the front. Um, so let's get into this before I start making comments on exactly what I think of this just yet. Let's get the toy out first. Always amazes me exactly how they vacuum seal these things in. All right, so first glance at this toy here, this is actually pretty light, um, like weight wise. The screw holes on the bottom, which is always something I've noticed with these, screw holes on the bottom are not really in the way. Um, one of the major complaints I have with some of the Hot Wheels stuff is the bottom is unpainted. And that pretty much pretty much looks like what we've got here is that the bottom here doesn't really have any of the blue detail markings that's on the top. But at the same time, it doesn't really need it either. So, I mean, this looks like the Falcon... It's underside. I don't know if in the movie the Falcon has blue markings on the underside, but for here, this sort of looks like it. We've got the deflector dish. Deflector dish. That's not a deflector dish. That's like a radio dish. And the cockpit. There isn't much else detail on here, and it doesn't really need much else. The engine, of course, has that nice classic blue that we've all grown up loving. So, to me... It's very light, but it's also, it feels very sturdy. Like, I can't break this with my fingers or anything. I'm a pretty strong guy. So, yeah, this would be a good, solid, sturdy toy. Now, what I do have over here, on the other side here, is I've got another model of the Millennium Falcon. Now, one thing is, this one is much heavier than this one is. Um, let's see how they line up size-wise. These actually line up pretty close size-wise to what the Falcons should be. So, I mean, this is this is essentially looking like a very similar version of the same mold. So that gives you an idea of exactly how far up this thing is going. And stuff like that. Um, compare, looking at the designs, it looks like, just from what I've seen and everything, that this Millennium Falcon has a whole bunch of panels on it. That's why they're blue. Um, the original actually seems to have red markings. Um, now I know the Falcon had blue markings in episode 3 and I'm not a prequel hater so I'm actually okay with it being blue this time. Um, yeah, this isn't, they didn't sound like they used the original mold to do this, but it looks like they used the original dimensions to do this. It is a nice profile. I really like the profile on this one. I like this. I wasn't exactly sure how much I would like this new uh, this new toy, this new design for the Falcon, but I'm really, comparatively, I really kind of like the way it looks. That front end thing kind of gives it a different feel. It's kind of cool, actually. But, um, yeah. If you, have, if you have to buy anything from the new line, you probably have to buy the Millennium Falcon. Now, there's going to be some people out there that are like, oh, I'm not buying it. I don't like the design. And that's fine. That's fine. But if you're going to get anything, um, it's probably going to be the Falcon. And this is a good, solid model. This was like $5. So it's a very easy, very cheap model. And it works very well, regardless of whether or not the movie is good or not, because it hasn't come out yet. So, yeah. I actually would recommend this one. I like this one. I'll probably pick up another one so I can have one at my uh, desk at work. I've got a small fleet growing on my office computer, which gets <laughs> multiple comments from people over and over again. So i got to expand the fleet. And other than that, I think it's a good model. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck. Have fun. Bye-bye.